Hi, I want to welcome you to this Stream Developers tutorial on iOS screen sharing. After watching this video, you will be able to build a Swift UI app with in app iOS device screen sharing functionality. You can also use an iOS device to watch a screen sharing from another platform like the web. We will integrate the screen sharing functionality into a video meeting app similar to Zoom or Google Meet using the iOS SDK of Stream Video. If you're new to Stream Video, I encourage you to check our website and go to Developer, Video and Audio. Here you can select your favorite SDK like React, iOS, Android, React Native, Flutter and JavaScript. I have already created a Starter Swift UI project to make things quicker in this tutorial. So you can check it and download the project in this GitHub repository by selecting the video conferencing folder. Let's open the Starter Xcode project. Under package dependencies in the Xcode project navigator, you can see we have stream video as a dependency. Under the folder setup, I have already set up the video SDK, but if you are new to stream, I encourage you to go to our website and check the video calling tutorial. Here it outlines how to set up the video SDK in a step-by-step -step manner. You can also check an article on our blog, build a full stack FaceTime clone with Swift UI. This article also shows you how to set up the video SDK. So before we add the screen sharing support, let's look at how the screen sharing functionality works under the hood in the SDK. The Streams iOS Video SDK provides support for Apple's ReplayKit framework. ReplayKit is a framework that allows you to share your app screen and record audio. This means when you use the Streams iOS Video SDK to build a VoIP app, the app will easily support screen sharing by default and backed by the Apple's ReplayKit framework. Let's look at how we can screen share from an iPhone and use the companion web app of Stream Video to watch the iPhone screen sharing. Additionally, we will screen share from the web and see how it appears on the iPhone. Let's run the app to see what we have in the startup project. You can see from the toolbar, my iPhone is selected. So in this app, we have a screen that looks like the around meeting app. So I'll click this button to create a new meeting. First, I'll set up audio and video and tap join. After tapping the join button, we get the local participant video with these call controls for toggling the video on and off. We can mute and unmute the audio and change the camera to front or back. So here we have five call controls. Let's add another button on the call controls for the screen sharing functionality. We have the call controls under the folder UIs and they are in the file around meeting controls view. So this consists of the five call controls I showed earlier on the screen. To add the screen sharing functionality, we will use an instance of the SDK's call view model. We also need a state variable to toggle between when screen sharing is on and when it is off. So let's add a state variable here and call it a screen sharing. We will set it to false. Then let's navigate to where we have the buttons. We will add another button here for the screen sharing functionality. The button label will have an icon and text in a VStack. So let's add a VStack container here. We will give it a spacing of 12. So for the content, we will add an SF symbol. Since the button will have two states, sharing and not sharing, we will need to use two SF symbols. We can switch between the states using a ternary conditional operation, along with the state variable we defined here. So let's bring the state variable first and use it to swap the icons anytime they are tapped. So for the true state of the condition, we will use this icon, share with you dot slash. Then for the false state, we will use the same icon, but not the slash version. So let's remove the slash. We can also use the foreground style along with the state variable to style the icon's color. We will also modify the height so let's add the frame modifier and set the height to 48. 
When we tap to switch between the icons, we also want to add animation. New in iOS 17, we can use the content transition modifier to seamlessly switch between the two icons. So let's add it over here. For the parameter, we want to use simple effect. So by tapping the icons, we create a smooth replacement transition. This is all about the icon, so let's add the text below it. When screen sharing has not started, we will show the text share. And when we start the screen sharing, we will show the text stop. We can also style the text by changing the font to caption and then add the content transition modifier and set it to interpolate. That will create a smooth interpolation when we tap and switch the text between stop and share. Let's add the button action. Let's use the state variable we created along with ternary conditional operation. For the true value, we will use the SDK's call view model instance and call the stop screen sharing method. For the false condition, we will use the view model and call the start screen sharing method. There are two types of screen sharing. So let's put a period here. You can see we have broadcast and in-app. When we set the screen sharing type to broadcast, we can still share the device screen when the app goes to the background or when it is inactive. When we select in-app, the screen sharing functionality will only work when the app is running in the foreground and not in the background. So let's leave it as in-app. You can read more about screen sharing in our documentation. So this is all we need to do to implement the in-app screen sharing in this video meeting app. We first create an instance of the SDK's call view model. Then we create a state variable to switch between when we are screen sharing and when we are not. Then we add a button to trigger the screen sharing. So let's run the app again. So I will tap to create a new meeting and set up audio and video and join the call. So you cannot see from the call controls, our fifth button is the share button. To be able to share the iPhone screen, we need more than one participant in the call. To join more than one participant, we are going to use the companion web app. We can join from the web using a tutorial on our website. So from our documentation, we have how to build an iOS video calling app. In this tutorial, we have user credentials over here. To be able to join the call from the web, these credentials should be the same as the one we have in the Xcode project. So let's copy the token over here and go to the Xcode project. I have set up the SDK in the folder setup and we have the file call container setup. So here I will replace the token and the other properties as well by copying them over from the web. Since the credentials in the Xcode project are the same with the one from the web tutorial, I'm going to run the app again. So once we join the call, we can also go to the web tutorial and join from the web by clicking this button. So I will first share from the iPhone screen that has appeared on the web as well. I will then stop the recording and cancel the call. Let's run the app again. For this time, we will share from the web. Let's now click this button to share from the web instead. So if I scroll here, you can see it also appears on the iPhone screen. So this is all we have in this video. I showed you how to add in-app screen sharing functionality to your Swift UI app. For more details, I encourage you to check the screen sharing section of our documentation. If you are new to stream video, you can check our website to get started. Thanks for watching this video.